Meza di Meza Corona. Representing Meza di Meza Corona, millennial and marketer, Deanna Delfonso and Senior Vice President, Rusty Pape. Big warm welcome. Good afternoon, I'm Rusty Pape. As was stated, Senior Vice President of Prestige Wine Imports. I also want to thank the WSWA for giving us this opportunity, a very prestigious opportunity, to present a unique product. We have an added benefit in that, if you heard the last part of our brand's name, this product's name, Mezza di Mezza Corona, we're an extremely large producer of varietals up in the northeast in Trentino, Alto Adige. Leading producer of estate bottled Pinot Grigio in the world, leading producer of Chardonnay for, by value in Italy. We work for a company of 1,600 families. Yes, it's a large winery, but there's 1,600 families that have been in business since 1904 that is behind this. So when we came out th with this product, we launched it February 1st, I guarantee you, working for 1,600 farmers, it was thought about, it was tested, it was rethought, it was recalibrated, it was rethought. We talked again with our distributor partners. We talked again with our customers in the market. An agricultural-based company isn't about today. We didn't rush this product out the market. From 40 months ago to today, we launched this February 1st to resounding beyond expectations. It is our number one priority. Our distributor partners have been informed about this and it's been extremely successful in the market. What's working? Independent off trade in a big way. Independent on in a big way. In the first 90 days, we have secured several chain authorizations. The product goal for the year is going to be exceeded. We're waiting for a few more results. I'll tell you a quick story that happened here at the WSWA. It was presented, I won't mention the buyer, the company, because it's not done yet, but we put this product in front of this buyer and he said, you know what, it's not a Prosecco, it's not going to sell. No, it's not a Prosecco. This is definitely not a Prosecco. We're 60% Chardonnay, we're 30% high altitude Pinot Bianco, we're 10% Muller Tergau. We're estate bottled, hand harvested. So as we were talking to him, because I've been trained to never accept the first no, not the second one either, not the third one either, keep hammering, keep hammering. <laughs> this gentleman had some children, children meaning in their 20s like I do, took a picture, texted it, said, would you buy this? Because he has a daughter, 25 years old, that drinks Prosecco. Without tasting it, with only seeing the package, said, absolutely. And that's exactly what happened today with us being here, presented to the WSWDA. Maybe you tasted it, I'm not sure. But what we do know is that when this product is presented to the consumers, when it's presented to the buyers, when it's presented to anyone, it generates interest. And now I'd like to introduce our millennial marketer. Thank you for that. I think, she, I think you just gave her a promotion. Rusty, what's a millennial? <laughs> I have three of them at home. So. Uh, and brand ambassador Deanna Delfonso. Thank you. I'm one of 75 million millennials in the US today, so part of the polarized group of game changers who are affecting every way that everyone is marketing products. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Mezza di Mezza, it's Italian glacial bubbly. It fits in between anything. As we learn more about where the sparkling wine trends are today, we know that it's not just about celebrating, it's about fitting into everyday life and everyday drinking. And Mezza di Mezza is just that. This wine speaks to us, and Italian glacial bubbly is the conversation waiting to happen. But not just the millennials, we invite everyone into the world of Mezza. We have a strategic print advertising campaign going on right now, both consumer and trade. 
We use our social media as outreach to our consumer with a unique social language using the Zs. Think kissing, sensational. Um, we also have a microsite that we use to show the consumer how to live in the world of Medza with videos, cocktail recipes. We've developed Medzology and a social feed as well. We've put the product in front of the consumer at events like South Beach Food and Wine, Aspen Food and Wine, Coachella this past weekend. We're right there where we need to be. And our packaging is Instagram worthy. Rusty and I were just taking some selfies backstage. Um, with this really unique zigzag, the cool blue, the premium design elements, sits on the shelf, captivating. It's ready for its close up. And with a premium design, we welcome and warrant the premium pricing where we know that the consumer is right now. All right, well, thank you, Deanna and Rusty. Let's give them a big round of applause for introducing us to Metza. And now let's take a close look from our expert panel of judges. Judges, what do you think? The one question, you know, I, the challenge you have, if you want this in a retail market, it's like almost ambiguous. It's like, well, is it a Prosecco? It, you know, you're coming across, most people that are looking at retail for Italian bubbly are expecting a Prosecco. But then when you look at the bottle, it doesn't say it. I don't know if, if it's descriptive enough saying glacial bubbly. That, 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 that's a really good question. Um, we're not a Prosecco. We're, we, don't, we can't be a Prosecco. We're well, obliged not to be a Prosecco. We own no vineyards in Prosecco. And, and, that's, and that, therein lies part of the challenge is going to be because I think the consumer that's going to pick up that bottle is going to expect a Prosecco. Our, our research, I would beg to differ. Okay. Our research tells us differently. Um, and it's the cooperative effort of our distributor partners like Southern Glazers, Breakthrough Beverage, RNDC, Heritage, uh, Horizon, excuse me, our independents, Virginia imports that are here. A lot of research went into this. There's, I, I don't want to talk about what consumers think or know about what they're drinking. I can tell you that 10 days ago when we visited our properties, we are also picking up uh, and introducing a Prosecco producer in the United States, a DOCG producer, a very high uh, and well-respected producer, producer that's never been in the United States before. We were in Valdo Biadene yeah. with for lunch. We, were served, we asked for a glass, we're in Prosecco. We asked for a glass of Prosecco with the owner. He, 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 he detected something different. And he said, can we see the bottle? In Prosecco, in Valdo Biadene, we were drinking an Italian sparkling wine, not from Prosecco. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're a pioneer. We, Pinot Grigio didn't exist 40 years ago in a, in a way. It existed in the vineyards. There was a little brand that's now doing quite well called Santa Margarita that was a pioneer. We are the leading producer of, that's, I'm all, that's all I'm gonna say about it, we're the leading producer in the world of a state bottled Pinot Grigio. So we think there is something about being the first. We think there is something about creating a category. We think there is something about being glacial. Our 7,000 acres are surrounded by two glaciers up in the Alps, in the Italian Alps. That's, that's just factual. And results so far have been beyond expectations, like I said, in the first 90 days. And that's the, thanks to the, the people up on this stage and those of you that are out in the, in the audience. Yeah. How, how much does glacial bubbly cost? This glacial bubbly, that's a good question as well. It's um, premium, so I was wondering It's what premium, so we're established at $14.99 retail, down to a $12.99. the growth is. Okay. It's, a, it's a segment where the growth has been. Right. And Rusty, by the way, you moved up several notches on the cool dad uh, <laughs> spectrum. <laughs> by having, uh, by being involved and having your brand involved at Coachella, that's exactly what right. uh, our industry should be doing is tying in to what's hot with the millennials, tying in through their lifestyle and so forth. Well, and, I, wish uh, I, I, I wish I could accept or <laughs> face, say thanks for run. that idea. Take it and run. It didn't come from me, I guarantee you. I might be a dad, but cool, you know, you'd have to ask He's my He's a lot kid. cooler cool. than he thinks. So <laughs> the other piece is uh, we've seen extensive growth in the sparkling wine category from champagne to cavas to Prosecco. Not everybody likes Prosecco or drinks Prosecco, so you don't have to 
have that imagery or have to market yourself like I'm like a Prosecco or I'm a Prosecco. So I do think there's, a, you know, we've seen great growth with Spanish yep. sparkling wines uh, as they become more of an everyday approachable, easy to drink sparkling sure. wine. So there's plenty of consumers out there that want a product like this to crack it open on a Monday night Absolutely. after yeah. soccer practice. And it is an extra dry, exactly. so there's so. enough residual, more than enough residual sugar in there too. Does the marketing or POS uh, communication in general speak to the glacial? Much of it does. Yeah, I mean the packaging, the, the cool blue elements that we use in a lot of our POS, it yeah. speaks to that cool, refreshing nature. Yeah. Um, so definitely. You know, Deanna, you mentioned that this is, a, a, I guess, a higher end. I don't know if anyone saw the report yesterday that came out about millennials. 30% of all millennials are still living at home with their parents. <laughs> they don't go to school and they don't have jobs. You know, so how are you, you know, being at the high end price point, do you think the millennial is really your, your target audience here? Uh, millennials, um, I can speak to millennials because I am one. We're curious and we want to experience new things, but we want authenticity. And maybe this consumer has already had Mezzacrona Pinot Grigio, and they're willing to spend a few extra dollars for the Italian glacial bubbly because it's something new and exciting for them. It's something that they can chat about on Instagram. You know, it's, it's a cool experience. And I think wine is becoming that. And, and my second part, because we own uh, Italian restaurants. How would you sell this into me? You know, how do I, like, if we were going to put this on the menu at the RPM Italians, Give me the 30 second pitch. Like, where does it, how, can, how do I? Can, do you want Deanna or? Do, do you want <laughs> well, I, I, we're going after millennials. Okay. In the, you okay. know, we, we have, well, we have a young female Mar demographic. I guarantee you the people that are buying it at retail, restaurant level, okay. chain level are not millennials okay. for the most part. But, Got it. Okay. You yeah. want to try Italian glacial bubbly. That's it. Something new and exciting. It's fresh. You want to try it. Okay. What, one of the things you said it was really interesting. Historically, as a co-op wine, that was sort of, it, 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 it wasn't a selling point. It, w it wasn't a great selling point. But in this new world of farm to table and helping farmers, you can turn that co-op into something very different about how this company is helping 1,600 farmers. And I tell you again, my kids, are really thoughtful for that. We heard our speaker say it this morning, that companies that go out and help people, help the environment, help the world, are, means a lot to those millennials. So if you can come up with a piece yeah. of that, and then add a local element of helping maybe American farmers or something where you tie into that, inexpensive cause marketing mm -hmm. relating to, right. there, there, there is something there. It would make like a great digital series for social media where there's 30 second vid video vignettes of telling the story on Instagram or Facebook or, you know, to me that would really uh, connect. And that's where we tie in our parent company of Mezza Corona, which we're notorious for all of what you're saying. Me personally, I spent seven weeks in Trento last summer developing or working on this product. I, I lived it, and I lived with those farmers, and I was there during harvest, and I have this vivid memory of farmers proudly, you know, delivering their product every day and supporting the harvest as one group effort. It's 1,600 farmers, but one family, and that's what this company is about, and that's what we're, we're translating here, and Mezza di Mezza is an extension of that. So it'll take some time, but yep. that, that's what we're working towards, definitely. And one thing that I would like to touch on is, yes, it is a cooperative, cooperative by, by design, but in Italy, there's different levels of cooperative. We're a level one cooperative, so there's 1,600 families that own somewhere between a half an acre or 150 acres that are part of this. It's, it's our version of doing what you gentlemen are doing. We're big. Being big allows you some real advantages. Efficiencies. Uh, we, can hand, we can handcraft some products too, just like you can make small wine specialist divisions to go after items like this and above, obviously. All right, well, thank you so much, thank Rusty you. and Deanna.